Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. So, right here, let's let's address this, but we're gonna call it the 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 fruit grape. Remember, it said the um, eat of the fruit. I in the day that you eat of the fruit of the tree of the science of good and evil of tov ra tov ra ra of of positive and negative of 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 good beneficial things and and harmful things right Th didn't say that you shall be dying to death i translate it as you shall be dying to death now of course once know i'm talking about bereshit and genesis so this is debate coming up um i give thanks to I and I sister wife you know the web mistress for you know um Oh, I got to explain something. I say mistress. People might think it's a disrespect. No, the mistress is the lady master. Is the lady master. So if you have the master of the house, like the the Adon or the um, the, the Baal. Now, see, people gonna say, "Oh, you talking about Baal?" You see, ones don't understand Hebrew, right? And here we want to heal up Zion Lex. Let's just heal up Zion Lex and also Maharika. It's gonna be an interesting debate. I don't want to give away too much. And if I do, as I get into this. I'll try to hold it until maybe Sunday, the same day, or or just a little after the debate. There's a debate coming on, and it's going to have this very same subject right here. Does the Bible condone um, the grape, the grapey, right? Does it condone the grapey? <laughs> I'm going to call it like that. Does it condone the grapey, the R-A-P-E, right? Does it condone? Um, does God, the God of the Bible, condone it? That's what's behind this particular subject matter. So we got to look at words. A very interesting build. They're having a build to the debate. So I said, you know, to my sister wife, you think I should touch on this? And then I'm listening to Zion Lex. He's he's on here. They probably bring on Maharika maybe a little bit later on, and he will probably, no doubt, you know, give his views on both the subject matter and his opponent and i guess what his main you know points are that backs up his particular view of this subject matter he's basically on the affirmative that yes the bible does and the god of the bible does condone the grapey the grape right he does condone this violation and let's call it like that because actually the scripture says that it's, it's death and as zion lex is quite right and accurate um in deuteronomy chapter 22 i not gonna get into a lot of details I'm not seeking to get into a lot of details here but kind of give a heads up you know to the chabarim to aina chabarim and also a hail up to Zion Lex. He, he's speaking about his growth, you know, and some views that he had for maybe, you know, 30, 40 years. You know, one of them is that he's not a, a Old Testament only um, um, Israelite. And he prefers to be known as a as an Israelite. And that's a very, very good position. Also to the one known as Israel Doctrine. I, I say he wiles out sometimes, but I do understand. And there's many times I, I just heard him today, tonight, and he was making a point back and forth. I actually agreed with, you know, some things he says. You know, he, he's, he's right there. The, the other points I don't agree with, that's a whole other point. Even some of your besties, your best friend, you know, or brethren, you might agree with them almost, almost, almost a hundred percent of the time maybe 90 90 something percent of the time but there's those times that you don't agree but here this is for the not for the debate but to address something that we have addressed with the chabarim but have not recorded you know anything or have really put it out maybe on the blog talk on the radio on the live stream we might have touched on this subject matter no doubt when going over the tour we are actually studying the um we're actually studying right here the fifth book of moses you know that's known as uh devarim right that's known as deuteronomy or the words right um eleha debarim so does the bible condone that's what we're going to focus on condone this word condone 
because we even heard on the podcast, the broadcast, Sarnetta, you know, the build to this Maharika and Zion Lex debate. And, you know, we put our, we'll put our shekels, <laughs> so to speak, you know, with, you know, our brother Zion Lex, you know, because there's, though his, his affiliations connection is much closer with those continue over the years. We do point to the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews and the Commandment Keepers Congregation of the Living God as a real root, especially among Rastafari, I and I Rastafari Yehudim, you know, um, Rastafari Israelites, um, we have the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews after the Order of Melchizedek. Yes, this is, this is how we just lay out the overview right here. We the Black Jews of Harlem from that particular um, birth, revelation, um, that's a significant for many of us and he was another brother that you know with closer ties to the community that actually went into you know much more of those details and what he said you know gave us both um confirmation you know confirmation also there was enough elucidation you know on the subject matter but when we're discussing this particular subject matter of whether we're showing just some stills right here for some videos. There's a bunch of videos out there that touch on this subject matter. So ones who are watching, we're not going to try to use this, this word because of, you know, the algorithms and, and because of how this particular word may adversely affect one's just understanding, you know, our point of view and also the evidence that we'll seek to bring forward right, to our particular point of view of this particular subject matter. We say, no, the Bible does not condone. And we hedge the argument as well as the proof to the argument on the word. What is the word? Right. And I know ones will say, well, you, 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 you're playing word games. Um, we're not playing a game, first of all. Right. But we are addressing the words like to, right now we to say the R.A.P.E. over and over in the video. Right? And even in the titling, that might be a little precarious, although we might just go with that particular title because it is necessary for ones to understand, you know, but we'll try to put it in a way that, you know, might be able to cause the video to be um, viewed, right? And the content to be received. Now, we deal with translations. They touch on some very good and very relevant points. And many of ones will tell me, well, you've been talking about this for forever. Well, not for forever, but yes, many of the subject matters we, we get to hear many of our brothers um, and sisters, you know, begin to articulate, you know, begin to articulate or are starting to articulate on many different levels. Now, it might just be just... Like there's a download and we downloaded first and they're downloading now. You know, I'm saying like coming from the most high, from the almighty, so forth and so on. And, or from, you know, just the spirit, you know, even that spirit of this growing consciousness of our people, you know, articulating and describing, you know, various um, relevant subject matters connected with the Bible, with our identity, who's who, so forth and so on. Now, I'm showing a couple of different biblical verses right here. All right, there's a few verses and, and we said we're not going to get into, you know, all the details of the verses, but there are some areas that we would definitely need to follow up on, especially with words. We're going to look forward to Zion Lex's um, debate um, or Maharika's debate, Maharika and Zion Lex's debate on the subject matter. Does the Bible condone the R.A.P.E.? Right. What says I and I, what, what do we say? We say no, it does not condone. And as we mentioned before, this is based on, well, what does the word condone, right? What does the word condone mean, right? What does the word condone mean? Now, a few ones and ones was talking about etymology. But curiously enough, we have yet to hear anyone address the etymology. Now, let's, let's date this right here. It's like Friday evening, Shabbat Shalom, Sanbet Salam, like 6 p.m. You know, the Erev, the Erev you know, um, we're in the Erev of the Shabbat, 
you know, Shabbat Eve, and about to deal with the TJIF. Hopefully that goes well. Last last um, week it did not. There was some blog talk technical issues. It's eight eighteen, the day after Marcus Messiah Garvey's. Uh, and Dagmawi Minulik's birthday, August 17th, you know, the Earth Day, the Born Day, you know, our Black John the Baptist, Black John the Baptizer, John the Baptizer, Marcus Messiah Garvey, the one who baptized so-called Negro colored people, right, in a greater, we could say, appreciation, you know, and identification, right, for the, the God-given um, beauty, strength, um, essence of who we are as black people, you know, he basically washed away a lot of that, the consciousness, which speaking on the conscious level and the actualization. So we look at Marcus Messiah Garvey to be, you know, our black John the Baptizer, right, to fulfill that particular role, even though John the Baptist had lost his head later on, right? And Kadamawi Hala Selassie, the, the Rastafari of the Rastafari, the. If you hear many ones talk about Rasta this and Rasta that, and this is Rastafari, and, and I and I this, and I and I that. But we seek to go to the very root, right? And we're going to also go to the very root of this particular subject matter. Now, notice that if you're watching the screen and a lot of the, vi a lot of the stills that we're, we're showing, a lot of the stills that we're showing, you'll probably see the R-A-P-E in the translation. There's many translations that actually opt to translate like this because it's a particular Western, white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, this, this world system. We are in the matrix, so to speak, right? And in this matrix, and there's a linguistic matrix, but we're hearing more and more ones articulate and address the fact that linguistics is important now we went to a few of these pages there's a couple of pages out there where many of the researchers and scholars and others are basically like-minded saying the bible does not condone rape and actually get mm, condone the the rapey right the the grapey right uh therapy <laughs> no not like that but i hope you'll get what we're saying right here right this is one of those pages as well i was going to actually go and kind of read and share and then bring up some of the Hebrew here and there. But I think we're just going to address, you know, the proverbial, okay, this is, ain't, that, ain't that an interesting subject matter? Does the Bible prescribe abortion? Okay, let's get off of that. <laughs> and now let us address condone. What is condone? What does condone mean? What does condone actually mean? Let's touch on the real etymology. I don't think a lot of ones understand what etymology is. So ones will say, well, let's look up a word. They look up a word. They go Google a word. And, okay, if you Google a word, you know, maybe you'll get Merriam's Webster's. Maybe you get this dictionary or that dictionary. Or there's a whole bunch of dictionaries out there. There's even the Urban Dictionary. There's all kind of people's, you know, you know. <laughs> amateurish dictionaries out there and people basically will look around and find a definition that they, they're pleased with but but here's the thing when we go into the etymology right when we go into the etymology of the word what does the bible say about the r-a-p-e it says it's a crime a crime that's punishable by death that's what the bible even in the translation, I'm beginning off with the translation and the translations. Yes, we, fo we point to the KJV, the King James, because that's the most popular one. And many of our fellow, you know, Israelites also utilize the King James Version. It is a good um, first step version, basic step, point of reference version, even in the studies. Right? It's one of the only versions out there that you can actually use the King James and get the strongs, the key words, and kind of be able to study even without a fluency in the Hebrew, the Hebrew of the old, what's called the Brit uh, Hayashana, the old, what's called the Hebrew Old Testament, as people call it, and also the Brit Hadash, the New Testament. Now, um, 
as you mentioned before, Zion Lex was saying some very interesting things. I said, you know what, I got to start to record right here, but I'm going to hold up for a moment because I know that there are some brothers and others who do check out, you know, this platform, even though we don't get nowhere near the views at the present time of many of the other platforms out there. This is good because what we're having here is like a yeshiva, a yeshiva, you know, a study, a reasoning, a study. You know, we're seeking to put out, you know, the basic teaching, like the line upon line, precept upon precept, Torah, Aliot, you know, Parasha, Parashiot upon Parashiot, you know, here a little and there a little. So there can be a body of work, you know, not just going into some of these hot points. We may go into the hot points like in the video or in a presentation like this. And usually we can go into it with a lot of confidence because, you know, in season, out of season, in the Shemesta, we call it the Shemesta, like within the season of Torah reading and feeding, anyone knows that we go through these sections of Torah, right, from Shabuah to Shabuah, that's like from the seven days to seven days, week to week, and there are various different Q's and A's, question and answers, key words, and we're able to really zoom in on vital matters of the text, right? Maybe not, maybe in this season, right? This season we touch on these areas of the text, right? But the other subject matters are there. So we become familiarized. And then as we go on with another Torah reading and feeding, it's like, wait, that particular point that was mentioned in Exodus, Right? Or a similar point, the same subject matter comes up later on in Deuteronomy or comes up later on in Numbers or, or in another area of scriptures. Right? So by consulting you know, with the Hebrew and looking into the Hebrew meaning of the, in the Old Testament, even the Hebrew of the New Testament, a lot of people are not really acquainted and aware that the New Testament was originally written as well as in Hebrew. Mm-hmm. It was written as well in Hebrew. And this is something that going way back to many centuries, maybe more than a millennia, yeah, definitely more than a millennia, it was known by some of the early church fathers. They understood this. They knew this. A few alluded to it in their writings. But because of what was going on, right, with the, the faith in, in Yeshua HaNotri, Yeshua HaMoshiach, within Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, and Christianity as it became, you know, state religion, especially among Rome, and as it went to different parts of the so-called Gentile world, the Greco-Roman world, things began to morph, and linguistics, other interpretations, languages came into it, right? But still getting to the roots of it. So we can actually go to a Hebrew point of reference, for what's called the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. But these subject matters, they come up. They come up again and again. And when we touch on a particular subject matter that has been mentioned in the Torah, the five books of Moshe, the Pentateuch, right, has been mentioned in the, the, the historical books like Joshua and Judges, right, has been mentioned in the pro prophets, has been mentioned elsewhere, like within the scripture, you know, and then also, it's being addressed in the Brit Chadasha in the New Testament. It gives us certain key scriptures, looking at the linguistics, the language, and the science of the language, the linguistic science. Our people need linguistic literacy, right? You know, we need that linguistic literacy, both in the English as well as in the Hebrew for, for specific for biblical studies or metuneter, you know, the sheshu metuneter, as it may be. So let's touch on this right here. So this is the subject matter concerning condone, right? So what is the etymology of condone? And just to answer this question, does the Bible condone R-A-P-E? Does, does the God of the Bible condone R-A-P-E? No, he does not condone. Perhaps one should choose a different word. Right, because the meaning of condone is not what you think condone. Condone is not what you think it is. Right, and see, there's two things in linguistic and language for for all languages. There is the etymological meaning and the connotative meaning. People are giving you the con game, and they're giving you the con game not because they're out to deceive you. A lot of people who are going with this, the Bible condones the R A P E. Right, they're going off of the connotative, the connotative definition, right? But not from the etymological or the true word, 
right? They're going over, you know, from the pseudo, the pseudonymous. Let me introduce some words right here. Pseudonymous. A lot of one's reasonings at best are pseudonymous. What do we mean that a lot of one's reasoning at best are pseudonymous? Pseudo, falsely, right? Falsely, nomos. Falsely, untrue, not true. Nomos, name. Falsely named. Falsely called. Falsely called. So their science or their knowledge is knowledge falsely so-called. You know, people say they, they got knowledge of things, and then when you really check it out, they are not scientific. They, they, they're not really, you know, provable, factual in the context that they can be proven. Some things, even according to the science of the present time, can't be proven, but then maybe later on, more technology, more awareness, and these things can be proved. But the etymology, the real meaning of the word condone, doesn't just mean does he permit or allow. We heard uh, a few ones say, well, yeah, well, bring, give us the etymology. A few ones on this most recent sign that uh, uh, build up to the Sunday debate here in this month of April, uh, not April, August, August. This is August, August 18th. So I think it's coming up the 19th on the 20th, right? Between Maharika and Zion Lex. It should be a really, really good one. And definitely would like to tune in and also show some support because we too are going to seek to have these sort of discussions and give thanks to the Honorable Priest Isaac as well for his platform and the Rasta Roundtable. Check out the Rasta Roundtable on the Priest Isaac YouTube, you know, the link there as well as the Institute and the offerings, right, that the Priest Isaac Institute has to offer, you know, to educate, you know, our people, right, and to educate ourselves, you know, so we can grow in that grace and that knowledge, right, as we say of the King of Kings Christ. But right here, 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 does the Bible condone? No, the Bible does not condone. Even in the sense of the connotative definition of allow or permit, that's the connotative, that's the connotation, that's the con game. The etymology means forgive or pardon. Forgive or pardon. This is where I think Zion Lex might go to. Abdiel Ben Levi. Abdiel Ben Levi. I think this is where our brother, you know, Ach Shalanu, I think this is where he might go to. Right? Because once we define what condone means, what does condone really mean? Especially if we look at the biblical context. And for us, when we look at the biblical context of any of these subject matters and themes, we can, first of all, you know, read what the King James Version says. What does KJV says? What does the other Bible say? And we've gone through this before. We'll show you the King James Version. We'll go through the Hebrew, a basic breakdown of the Hebrew. And then we'll look at many of the other versions out there. You know, and hopefully the audience and the diligent student will see, whoa, how come they say this over there? Because there we recognize that many of the translations are subjective. So as objectively, from an objective perspective, what we seek to have is an objective perspective. Because we're not a, we're, we're not religious in that sense. People might think so because you're always talking about the Torah and going into this and the sabbatical study. So, so they'll think. Right? That's the part of the connotation. That's the con game that they, they connotatively think. Right? So looking at the connotation and looking at the etymology, it might be necessary to define what is connotation and what is etymology. So we just answered that the Bible does not condone. We didn't go into the details. We're not having a debate. We're not debating ourselves. And for a teaching on the various areas of the scripture that may be in question, we will say stay tuned. If that's something that the Chabarim and ones will be interested in, you know, Rastafari Jews at Gmail, you know, hit us up. Also, the LOJS.org. You can hit the contact. If, the, if there's some subject matters you would like us to address, because some of these we might have already addressed and can find a way to share, you know, our previous presentation or demonstration, you know, um, on that particular subject matter or even pick up with it again within the vlog right here or on the just vibes and so let's first of all address 
what is connotation what is the connotation of words so that in the future when one say is this this or is that that one would choose the right word right because if condone doesn't really just mean to allow or permit but if condone means something else if condone means to forgive right to pardon in the sense of to atone right like with murder and this is one i heard brother zion lex focusing on the fact that the verse within deuteronomy chapter 22 that is clearly i think is 22 around verse 28 or so we can bring that up that clearly is a what they call a so-called rape verse the punishment right is likened which is death is likened the the the, the, the scenario according to the ancient case law in the torah not the tanakh not the halakha not the gemara and and see um chris harris you know going into some i like that debate if that debate comes on to debate you know what the the sages and the oral tradition says about this with brother zion lex i, I don't know what that's going to happen but that seems very interesting it's kind of interesting that ones are getting into these areas of study and presenting these areas because these are areas that the Khabarim know that we do go into right maybe not to the extent like ones like zion lex coming from that um, Ethiopian Hebrews commandment keepers congregation of the living God the royal order you know being within that particular order we see that order right there as an important root right to Rastafari to the Ainai as Rastafari Rastafari Yehudim as Rastafari Israelites you know making that Judeo some would say Judeo Coptic or Judeo Christian so to speak strong quotes there connection right so we see that as very very important right in what we would refer to as the 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 pure revelation of rastafari according to the the man that son of man the rastafari Kedemawi, Hala Selassie. so here here let's deal with some basic definitions right three of them we're going to touch on three of them what does connotation mean what does etymology mean and lastly, but not leastly, what does condone mean according to the etymology, the true meaning, the true word, right? Not the, not the pseudo, not the pseudo. Most ones talking about pseudo this, pseudo that. When you go and look up most of the definitions, many of the definitions are heavily connotated, right? To how the thought process is shaped now, how they want you to think like within what sort of matrix they keep you in the matrix when you go to these words and you find out like for example with the word they call the word gay g-a-y right if you look up the etymology the true meaning of it it meant happy now it refers some say to being born a certain way or sexual orientation so forth and so on there's a whole big debate on it but we can see that is a good example of both the etymology of the word G-A-Y or gay, right? And the um, connotation. So today's use of that particular word, the word gay, is a connotative definition. Basically, in other words, it's a con game. But then when you look at what the root of the word or the etymology, that's totally different. So what does the word mean? You can go with the crowd. You can go the broad way, right? You already know the broad way, where the broad way leads. Right? But narrow right, is, you know, narrow is the way. Narrow is the gate that leads to life. So let's go. All right. So here, 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 as you can see, I'm typing in etymology. Right? Etymology. Are we there? Okay. Here we go right here. Etymology. All right. So the etymology, this is the Oxfordian breakdown. I want to break down of the word connotation so what we're saying is that when most people do the little um the shortcut way you know just to google the word like to, you know according to whatever dictionary you can find certain dictionaries that depends on you know you can kind of three card monte the word they basically three card monte the word with you right but they don't often go to the connotation what the actual connotation con connotation okay connotation right here so medieval latin connotare to mark in addition 
Kano Tashio, Kano Tatio, Kano connotation. Then it says right down here, connotation to mark in addition. All right, connotation. All right, the root word of connotation. Now they say connotation refers, we just give you the basic. The connotation refers to the wide variety of positive and negative associations that most words naturally carry with them, whereas denotation, so some would make the argument a connotation and a denotation, is the precise literal definition of a word that might, they didn't say that will, but might be found in dictionary. The interesting thing is that the old dictionaries had like some of y'all know this, the old dictionaries had the uh, etymological brackets where before you even get to the one, two, three, four, or however many entries it has, it will have those brackets and it will break down and then have a little code there like it's from this language or from Latin or from Greek or from French and then you see how again it comes into the English. You can see it's um, descent, the chain of custody, so to speak, of the word coming down to us in the present form. Right? And also the little twist on the word depends on what age or among what people this word comes down. Because remember, this is a European language. If we talk about who we are as a people, how we was brought under and into this um, system of things, into this matrix, so to speak. That's why the Bible says, come out of her, my people. Because we're in this matrix. Babylon is not just a physical place, but it's, a, it's, it's like in the matrix. It's like a, a kind is a particular consciousness it affects our mind it affects our soul our spirit right how we see things because even physics say that the observer affects what is observed right so the denotation is the precise so the denotation would be what we would mean by saying etymology right more of the literal definition of the word that might and say that will but that might be found in a dictionary and then you can break down like the three types of connotation. Positive connotation is words that conjure. Notice the term conjure, you know, and, and how this word is used. Well, I want to show our viewers, listeners, and especially the Habarim, our fellow Talmudim, our fellow disciples, right, is this is what language is. Why did they call it spell? When you spell a word, well, to conjure, right? To conjure a favorable, what it says, emotional response. To conjure a what? To conjure a favorable emotional response. Now, the negative connotation, remember, it says eating of the, the fruit, right? Of the tree, of the science, or the knowledge, scientia, of good and evil, tovra. Right? A negative. So we just touch on the tobe. The tobe is like, like the good, the positive. Right? Words that may conjure. But notice how to use that term conjure. A favorable, a what? Emotional response. Right? Because a lot of times one has to recognize when one's emotions are being played at. Especially in the subject matter of does the Bible condone R-A-P-E? Right? What's being conjured? Right, negative connotation is when a when a negative connotation is made, it represents the person or the thing in an unfavorable light. Notice the negative. You see, like in the negative, there's light in that, according to this this entry right here, unfavorable light. But in the positive, there seems to be a favorable emotional response. Right. Then lastly, you have the third, which is a neutral connotation. I'm going to seek to give a neutral, my right, so-called connotation if we're going to play the con connotation game, right? But when we look at the etymology, what we're going to get is the denotation, the denotation, right? So then go into a little bit more right there. What is the denotation for etymology? Let's look at the denotation. Remember what's it about denotation, right? right? The literal meaning, etymology is the etymos logos, etym the study of words, logos, logia, including how they got their meanings, how they got their meanings and where we can evidence in writing or elsewhere, right? Usually from before the past, how they got their meanings and how words develop throughout history. 
a good way of thinking of etymology is to use the image of tree roots. So when we talk about the roots of words, tree roots, and we as called chosen the faithful rise to fry about the roots. But you don't hear folks talk about the roots or culture in the true context, <laughs> right? Tree roots, as language develops, all the individual roots of a word come together to form a sturdy foundation. A what kind of foundation? A sturdy foundation. So we got a lot of like little rocky foundation and and not so clear, right? The root word of connotation. All right, we're gonna go to the etymology, but let's just do this right here. We said three words, right? We said, we said three words: connotation, etymology, and then we'll give the receipts, the evidence on what condone means. Condone means to forgive or to pardon. So the next question is: since the punishment for the R-A-P-E, according to HaTorah and, Devar and Deuteronomy, is death. Even in the Hebrew where it says he shall be killed or slain, right? The one that does, as, a, as when a man like slays his neighbor, right? The translation be, be tricking you. The translation be tricking you, but getting past that word, we see it's Ratzach, Ratzach, right? Tirzach, al Tirzach. Do not murder. Different than kill. Harag. Harag. Right? And ratza. Two different words. So here the root word in connotation, etymology, borrowed from medieval Latin, connotatio, connoto, I mark in addition. From the Latin con or cone, that means together or with, and noto. Noto, I note. So even in the connotation of words, what do we have here, Chabarim? In the connotation of words, we have a very subjective. There's a subjective value. Connotatio, connotatio, connotatio. Then we have connoto, right? Which in the Latin would look like be somebody say, if I say connoto and we're speaking Latin, I'm saying that I. I'm marking something or I'm noting something. Like somebody say, duly noted. I might be noting something in a particular way. So that is subjective. It's based on I. Not based on what it is, but it's based on like my view of what it is. Just to break that down right there. So let's scroll down here and let's go to Etim Online. Ones know we're going to go there. Etim Online, at least the Chabarim should know. And it's nice, neat right here and puts the facts together. So we have early 15th century. So this word connotation before, like in the, in the, in the 10th, 11th, 12th, that word wasn't there. Maybe another word, another expression was used, but that word wasn't there. Right? A concomitant symptom. Chan. Now we're getting into these sort of areas. What does it say? A concomitant <laughs> symptom. Of course, one's going to ask, what the, a concomitant, that means like going along with, like committed, like with being committed symptom, like a, a secondary signification. You see what it says? 1530s, a secondary signification. So most ones, when they say, well, does the Bible condone R-A-P-E? By using the word condone in the popular way, that word is misunderstood or that word is connotatively understood, is a concomitant symptom. Right? So it's like diagnosing. This is what leads to a lot of mental illness, too. Because a word that you accept connotatively and then you put feelings and emotion, right? That's what one must lead, right? With logic, right? That's why we're talking about the baptism, John the Baptist and Marcus Gard, the black baptizer, on the podcast and went to the metaphysics and the actualization, you know, with Marcus Garvey and then Rastafari, Katamaha. It was interesting right there. You know what I mean? Because we're talking about the intellect. Why intellect is important. Even that cleansing of our intellect. That we could say like the baptism, baptism of John. Right? Yohannan uh, Matabil. Right? Yohannes Matemku signifies. But here we have a secondary signification. Connotation is a secondary signification. That which is included in the meaning of a word besides... 
besides. That means that it's not really the meaning of the word, but it's something like in addition. In addition to the direct meaning of the word. Something beside. I think you're beside yourself. They bes and they get beside themselves with what they add to this. I'm not saying that ones will not do this. We all do we could do this subjectively. Right? But it's are we trying to find out what the truth is? Or what I or you or someone else wanna wanna believe the truth. We wanna, we wanna know what the truth, what does the evidence point to? So the evidence points to connotation being a secondary signification, that which is included in the meaning of a word besides its primary, its primary denotation. When we talk about the denotation is the precise, the more exact. It's like the etymology. From medieval Latin, connotationem. Connotationem. Nom, uh, the nominative is connotatio or connotatio. Noun of action from past participle stem of connotare. Connotare. Signify. What does it mean? Signify in addition. Con. Con. With. Together with the note. So the note, right? Remember the notation is how can we see this word used over time and going back to the earliest times and usage of it? That's the note. But then what goes along with that becomes a secondary signification or a concomitant symptom. I can understand why one probably didn't go to the connotation because just to probably articulate these words will be difficult. This is why we have to up our reading, the basic reading, writing, and arithmetic. You know, up our scientific literacy. Right? Encouraging our brothers and sisters. If you don't have even your basic GED, let's get, yo, get it, get it, get it, get it. Especially nowadays in this social media of all these, how can you say, not just apps, but you know, these opportunities. Because these are basic tools that you need so you can know the truth for yourself and why we'll have to depend on someone else. I, I could read this, I could go through this, and then you can go over it and see whether you find the same thing for yourself or even more that either I didn't touch on or was not able to touch on. So connotare means to signify in addition to the main meaning. The main meaning, right? This is a term in logic. That's why you don't hear one talking about connotation and etymology. You're not deal with the logic, the logos in the beginning was hadavar. The word, the logic, the var, the word, term and logic, logos, the logia, the decalogue, the ten words, the word. The beginning was the word, right? The logic, a term and logic, literally to mark along with. So here's how it really goes. True discipleship. We get to what the root, what it really, really means. Not how we feel about how it means or how we would like it to mean something else or it makes us feel this way or that way. Nah. We get to what does it really mean, right? The term and logic, literally to mark along with. But now the connotation is an additional note. So sometimes what we do is we'll go through a word, you know, do our research, take our notes, right? And write down the literal, the direct meaning. And then as we're trying to understand, okay, how this, like get the spirit, not the letter of the law, but get the spirit of the word. This is where we might go through our additional, you know, marking along with our additional marks, additional notes, like take note, take note, right? Both the denotation notes as well as the connotation notes from a simulated form of Latin comb. So con comes from the Latin comb. Now, I know a lot of Ones and ones who want to talk about just get to the truth, such and such. They don't have the time or the mind for this, right? This is almost like we say, like a quiet taste, but, you know, it says practice makes perfect, right? From a simulated form of Latin comb with together. This is where the comb, C-O-M and C-O-N, you know, and all of that linguistic notare to mark, to note, to make a note, so when ones look up most of the definitions that can easily be Googled, you know, when you just look up what the word, what is the meaning of this, the meaning of that, usually what they're giving you, they're usually giving you a bunch of connotation. They're giving you like additional notes, right? Additional notes. The same thing they do with these other translations, these nowadays translation of the Bible, right? KJV does it to a far less significant degree. Right? Usually the KJV is giving you as close to as possible as the translators understood. But now, 
we have all these other Bibles, and I have to say there's a lot of malice of forethought. Right? They are seeking to prove their own feeling, therefore they have now retranslated these things that are not consistent with the Hebrew meaning, but more with their feeling, their connotation. So the KJV, more likely than not in many places, right, has a lot of a denotation right, coming from the Hebrew, but of course, translating word from Hebrew into one or so words in English as anyone who has any linguistic um, ability will understand. Whether you speak Spanish and English, or you speak French and English, you speak two or three languages and you're trying to communicate one thing from one friend over here to another one who doesn't speak like this, and you're trying to figure out what's the right words. And some of y'all know, if you don't hit the right words or if you say it in a certain way, it can give a person a connotative meaning of what the other person said or what is being said. Right, so ones who have done translations even on the fly understand how that is. Right, from nota, mark, sign, a means of recognition. Right, a means of recognition, and then it goes on. Right, then it goes on. We can get into some of all of this, so forth and so on, but that's a little additional. If ones want to, you know, the use which I shall make of the term connotation needs to be explained. There are a large class of words which denote two things. There is a large class of words which denote two things, right? Which denote two things, to both together. But the one perfectly distinguishable from the other. Of these two things also, it is observable that such words express the one primarily, as it were, the other in a way which may be called secondary. Thus, white in the phrase white horse denotes two things, the color and the horse, but it denotes the color primarily, the horse secondarily. We shall find it very convenient to say, therefore, that it notes the primary, connotes the secondary signification. This is James Mill footnote in analysis of the phenomena of the human mind from 1829. All right, I give it to the Gentiles, you know, like, you know what I mean? They, they learned a lot from our ancients. Now we have to up, you know, our, you know, understanding of these things. Now, let's touch on etymology. We already connected that denotation. The denotation is like the etymology, the denotation right there. That comes close to the etymology, the more precise. So here in etym online, we're going to look up etymology. Right, etymology. Interesting, because you also have etymology, and then you got folk etymology. Notice the etymology is late 14th century. That's like the 1300s. And then you have folk etymology, which is like roughly, they say, 1882. Right? So let's, let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, so etymology. Etymology of now, late 14th century, roughly 1300s. Right? Ethymologia. What's ethymologia, the roots? This is touching on etymology, the etymology of etymology. We begin off with connotation, so I hope one's got a good idea of connotation. Connotation is a secondary signification. It's like an a long note with the primary meaning. Now we're getting to etymology. Et ethymologia, facts of the origin. What does it say? Facts. So people say, oh, you're just talking about words. No, we're talking about word facts. Because we don't understand the facts of the words, and we can use all the words in the world. We're not going to really understand really any facts, so we just deceive ourselves. So we need to understand the facts of the origin and the development, the development of a word. In fact, sometimes we find just going through a word and seeing how a word has kind of morphed over time. Right, And then when you sit back and what we call it like meditate and you think about it, you reason on it, you look at what you understand of life. Sometimes that's some some of the most interesting, right, um, study, right? And this is what real scientists do. You know, I say real scientists, those who seek to know the truth, right? I could say Gnostic, but then you're going to get caught up on another level. Facts of the origin and development of a word. From Old French, etymologue, 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 14th century modern French, etymologie. 
from Latin etymologia, from the Greek etymologia. So basically, this is a, a Greek word that came into Latin, and further, it um, kind of emanated into English, so to speak. Right, you know, through a kind of degraded process, gra gradual degradation. So from the root, right, gradually degrading to the understandings that we have today. So the Greek is an analysis of a word to find its true origin, to find its pseudo origin. No, to find its true origin. Right. This is why when you hear people say, well, "What's the etymology of it?" I heard one say the etymology of condone is to allow or to permit no that's not that that's the connotation that's not the denotation see the etymology is linking with the denotation the analysis of a word to find its true origin properly properly the study of the true sense of a word etymo means true and logia means word or logic etymologia etymologia the study of the true sense of a word or the truth, etymo, right, and logia, true logic. We're talking about logic here. With logia, the, the, the suffixal part logia often is brought out in later English as the study of. But, going, but that's coming through the Latin. We get back to the Greek, we have logia, the words. Interesting that Deuteronomy, the fifth book of, of Moses, the gospel according to Moses, uh, is known as Devarim, Devarim, which means the words. Just to just to link you've Logia, Decalogue, the ten words. Logia, the study of a speaking of. Right? Etymon is the true sense, original meaning. The neuter is etmos. Etmos. What is etmos? Etmos means true, real, actual. What does etmos mean? The true, the real, the actual. Related to etios, etios, right, which is true, which perhaps is cognate, some say, from the Sanskrit satya and the, the, the Gothic uh, sunjis, the old English so, so, true, right? Then it says of the stable, so forth and so on, boom, 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 uh, Latinized by Cicero as. Veriloquium, veriloquium, I think like true words, true words. A little bit more right here. In classic times, with reference to meanings, later to histories, classical etymologists, Christian and they say pagan, base their explanations on allegory and guesswork, lacking historical records. So in ancient times, we have it a little bit better because we can now look on the past and with all that has been aggregated or gathered from archaeological or other ancient evidence and the, the world and all the people, you know, having even this, this social media and the communications, we can bring together a lot much more historical records. Earlier etymologists had to use allegory and guesswork. So that means our etymology today, right, may be and is better than what the early classical etymologists from the later uh, Greco-Roman times. That, that's like the, we say roughly past 2,000 years, as, as pointed to as that, right? As well as the scientific method, the what? The scientific method, what? The scientific method to analyze them. And the discipline fell into disrepute that lasted a millennium. You see that? You, you see what it says? There's a discipline. Because this is a discipline. See how much time we're spending just right here just to give a basic foundation? And so in the earlier part of this, we just said we'll give an answer. Boom. Right there. Does the Bible condone in the etymological sense, the denotation of the word, not the con, the connotation of the word? No. No. It punishes. Right? It punishes with a death penalty. Right? Because... The R-A-P-E is on the same level as murder, right? So here, 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 Falbert, Dictionary of Received Ideas, wrote that the general view was that etymology was, quote, the easiest thing in the world with the help of Latin and a little ingenuity. This is what um, Falbert, right? right? Now, remember, a lot of this is being applied initially to English or to Latin and Greek, 
Now, for us in the African Shemitic languages, like of the Bible, the Hebrew, and the Ge'ez, and Hark, it's, it's a lot tighter. It's, it's a lot more, because this is our own thing. Right? See, the Greek, the Greco-Roman, this is something that they have. We've come into their kind of world system. Even the Israelites, the, the Judeans came into their world system and had to kind of surf, as it were, right, in their, in their matrix, so to speak. As a modern branch of linguistic science treating of origin and evolution of words from 1640s, as, quote, an account of particular history of a word mid 15th century related etymological etymologically right the last part we're going to touch on here and then really seal up right here uh, as practiced by socrates in the kratilus kratilus uh, etymology involves a claim about the underlying semantic content of the name, what it really means or dictates. This content is taken to have been put there by the ancient name givers. Giving an etymology is thus a matter of unwrapping or decoding a name to find the message the name givers have placed inside. Now this is from Rachel Barney. Um, Socrates Agonistes, the case of the Cratylus etymologies in Oxford Studies in Ancient Philosophy, and this is volume XVI 16, 1998. All right, so here, here, should we get a drum roll? No, we don't need a drum roll. Let's go to condone, right? Let's go to condone, the etymology of condone. All right, we've been showing them this for years, but ones don't want to really go here but maybe after this if we are able to bring across a clear consistent point because these are tools here for the future right that's why we're recording this at this time 2023 but we've we've touched on this before but it's good to see some of the conscious community actually picking up on some of the same principles because it will clarify we'll get a lot of things you know better um understood hopefully right condone is a verb right does the bible condone our ape we say no from the denotation of the word the etymology the true meaning of the word no maybe you want to find another word you know in fact the bible right um punishes right there's the death penalty let's say like this there's a death penalty for the rape like there's the death penalty for murder I'm emphasizing murder. In our Hebrew language, the African Shemitic language, there is one word, ratzach, for murder, and harag, for killing. And it's interesting, we can go into this in the Deuteronomy chapter 22, when it likens the, the one, the case of the R-A-P-E, that's in Deuteronomy chapter 22, is punishable by death. And even in the verse, the passage, it likens, right, that act with the act of murder. Just as a man would murder, would plot to kill his neighbor, his brother, the same thing this man has plotted to do, but in a sexual way, right, to a woman. And it's punishable by death. All right now that could be a short right there you know <laughs> go see to get some shorts out there you know so this is the short right there it is punishable it is punishable by death all right get into that in another vlog but just to keep this at an hour tight and right condone the verb 1857 to forgive or pardon something wrong the bible ha torah does not pardon the R-A-P-E. It puts the R-A-P-E on the same level as murder. Notice a man murders a man, right? Something he has done against a man, a man's soul, a man's life. A man, R-A-P-E is a woman. He's done the same thing against that woman, against her life. And both of them have the same, the very same punishment. They both have the punishment of death, of death. 1857, Condone, to forgive or pardon something wrong, especially by implication. From Latin, condonare, 
Condonare means to give up, to remit, to permit. He does not permit. The Bible does not permit. It punishes it, says the one who does that shall surely be put to death. Your eye, our eye is not to pity them. Right? What he has done to a woman is as what a man has done to a man has murdered. Except the, the murdered man is gone, but this woman is still here. So he must go. From a simulated form of comb. Here, perhaps, an intensive prefix of the con. Remember with the con, uh, donare, donare. Like to donate, right? Means to give as a gift. Like, does he give it as a gift? To give, donare. But Condone, right, means to forgive or to pardon. And he does not pardon. Let's just give the verse here on the outro right here. Okay, so here, here, here. I know it looks all Hebrew right here. Here's Deuteronomy 22, 26. Here's the verse right here. Here's the verse. Here's the verse. Here's the KJV, right? Let's go without the, um, without the Strong's, um, the Strong's links right now. But to the damsel, thou shalt do nothing. There is no sin worthy. There is no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. Even so is this what? Even so is this debar. Debar is word, speech, this thing, right? So now this is the second part of the verse. The first part is verse 25, 25, 26. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, right? And the man force her and lie, lay sexually with her. Now notice he force her and lie or lay, right? The shakab, shakab, right? To lay down, it can have different contexts. But here he forced her, right? He forced her. Now, force can mean he encouraged her. See, this is one thing I hope Brother Zion Lex brings out the chazak. Because some say chazak. It's not chazak. It's chazak. Chazak. Chazak to strengthen, to prevail, to harden, to become strong. Right? It has different connotations. In fact, when we complete a Torah, I mean a, um, a book of Torah, Right at the end of completing Bereshit, Genesis, uh, Shemot, the names, Vayikra, and he called uh, Bamid Bar in the wilderness or Debarim, Deuteronomy, you say Chazak, Chazak, Unit Chazik, Chazak, Chazak, Venit Chazek. We say, Be strong, be strong, and make I and I encouraged, be encouraged. May we strengthen one another, encourage one another. It's not rape, rape, and rape each other. No. You see, so you have to understand the chazak, right, means to fasten, to seize, to be strong, right, causatively to strengthen, to cure, to help. It can also, depends on the context, so everything has to do with context right here. But it says, but if a man find a betrothed damsel, right, and he force her and lie or have sex with her, sexual intercourse, congress, then the man only that, that lay with her, right, shall die. Right? So here we have the Hebrew right here. Right? It says, Ve'im basade yimtsaha isha eta ha na'ara ha me'orasa ve he chazik ba. Ve he chazik ba. Ve he chazik ba. There it goes. And we and he chazik. And he chazik. Now this is an interesting um, sense. And ba against her ba upon her ba it's this part right here hopefully zion lex will bring that out if that's part you know of what's going on and he has opportunity it says this is the key part this is the key phrase right here the oh, modern hebrew ve he chazik ba ancient pointing we he chazik ba 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 upon her or against her right against her force her and says, Ha Isha, right? Against her, upon her, the woman. With her chazik, with her chazik ba, ha ish, ha ish, the man. So the man, he forces himself, he encourages. So it can be on one level encourage, he strengthen, right? But now in the context of this phrase right here, with her chazik ba, ha ish. He has force, and this is clear with what comes after, with shakav, 
Wishakav, Ima, and he lay with her, and he, and we could say like we say today, he sex her, he lay down for her, he he make her lie down, you know what I mean? He for, he's forcing. This is what's key right here. He's forcing her, right? And he's forcing her to have sex, right? See, see the same word chazak can be to force and encourage, but there's a different context. Like we do when we finish uh, a Torah reading and feeding, we say chazak chazak wenit chazek. Right, be strong, be strong, and make we encourage one another. May we strengthen, so it can be strengthened or encouraged. Depends on the context. This is the this is the key phrase right here in this, and from the Hebrew perspective, it becomes clear. And then we compare this with what we find elsewhere. Umait, umait haish, right? Asher shakav imaha. Levado. So what it says after that and death, right? Like dead, like to say, like dead on the man. Umetaish. Dead on the man. Umetaish. Dead on the man. Asha Shakav. Asha Shakav. The man that has laid with her. Shakav. That has sex her. Ima. Shakav. Ima. Levado. Libado. Libado. Alone. Only. Right? The man, why? Because she was betrothed. Right? See, if it said that she'd betrothed and he just shakab with her, it implies, and she doesn't scream out, she doesn't resist or nothing like that, that implies she's a willing participant. See, what ones are failing to recognize in some of those other scenes or those other areas of scripture, which some would like to say, well, that's rape or such and such, like within the Torah, other areas, the numbers verse and the other parts right here, or even comparing the, the, the bride's price. That's what they call a shotgun wedding. But see, those are other areas. We're not going to get into that. We already are over, a little over the mark right here. Let's seal this up right here. But what it says, do not hurt the girl. That's one translation right there. Let's go to KJV. But to the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin. There was no lack, no wrong, we say, worthy of death. No sin of death. For as when a man rises against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this man. And remember, one thing that we teach in the Rastafari Yeshiva, right, the Rastafari Yehudim, Rastafari Jews, royal order here, is that the italicized words in the KJV are not really there. We can see this right here. You notice after every word or phrase of words, but to the damsel, you know, to the damsel, it's going to, let's see, we'll go right here. Let's go over right here. But to the damsel, we, we clicked, we clicked something else. They go, but to the damsel, Naara, the Naara, 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 to Naara, thou shall do nothing. Thou shall do like the word, but it's like not do a word, not do a thing. Because the word word can mean a word, it can mean a thing, a matter. Let's go right here, here, here. Vi la Naara, vi la La naara, la naara, and of the naara, lo taase davar, lo taase davar, not to do nothing. Ain, there's not ain la naara, ain la naara, ain la naara, not of or for the naara, hate, hate, hate. Um, sin, missing, lack, ukri, efri, mavet. So what it's saying here is ain la naara chet a mavet. That there is no um, sin of death. There's no sin of death. Because there are sins of death or there's sins that's worthy of death. Like murder. So therefore it's clear in this passage here in the scripture that the R-A-P-E Right, as ones call it today, is a sin or a crime worthy of death. Ain la naara chet mavet ki kaasha yakum. Right now, here it's saying right here is ki four. It's now giving a kind of like almost an ancient like like case law comparison. It's saying ki four kaasha kaasha yakum for like that which Yakum, 
right? For it's like one who ki ka'asha yakum, yakum, yakum. He who rise up ish. It's like when a man rise up. Ki ka'asha yakum ish al re'ehu. It's as when a man rises up all upon re'ehu, al re'ehu, al re'ehu against his neighbor, u ritzacho, u ritzacho, ritzacho come from ratzach, ratzach, same word, al tizach, using the commandments where we brought out, thou shalt uh, not murder, don't murder, no murder, not to murder, right, different than harag, harag in Hebrew is the word for kill, so the translator is a little fast and loose there and says kill, more properly is no murder. Here it says, U, U Ratzacho. Urzacho. We could contract it as Urzacho. Urzacho. Or Urzacho. As in murders, Nefesh. And murders a soul. Cain. Cain. Like, like, like for sure. Ha Davar Hazet. Right? Cain, so, like, yes, Cain, Cain, Cain. Some say Khan, but Khan in Hebrew means, like, here. Like, to say here, there, like, here. But, you know what I mean? Like, positionally. This Cain, Cain, more correctly, Cain, ha-davar ha So is this matter, Cain ha-davar ha This is like a way of even reasoning. So, like, after you said a matter and say, well, this is like that, Cain ha-davar ha Right? So is this word. So is this word, davar, ha davar. So is this matter. So is this logos. So is this logic. Right? So it's very clear from a Hebrew context that it's saying that the RAPE is a crime punishable by death. Now, with some of the other areas of scripture, right? There's some other areas. Now we can bring this up like this by looking at it from the Hebrew perspective. That's the can, can, so, therefore. You know, Ken Hadavar Hazet. So it should be very clear, right, that Yahweh, that 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 Ha Kadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the Name, and the Scriptures called the Bible does not condone, right? Does not condone. <laughs> does not forgive, right? Does not pardon. You see what it says, slayeth. It says when a man ratzach. Right, because remember this damsel, right? The damsel, the naara, the naara was betrothed. Morasa, right, was betrothed. Right, so one can have a reasoning on that, but it's clear this happened to the damsel upon the damsel. That's why we pointed to, you know, um, what it says. You know, in the previous passage right here, where was it? Where was it? It was Vihazik Aba Haish. Right, right. And 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 he forces upon her the man. It's almost like this is bringing out the sense that he forces himself upon her. He forced himself. Let me see if any of these dictionaries here really bring it out correct. I mean, any of these um, other translation. Well, here in the ISV, but then they they use this term loosely, right, elsewhere, where it doesn't apply. Here it applies according to the Hebrew, right? If a man finds a betrothed, a woman who is engaged to be married, and he forces himself upon her, that's what it's saying. And he forces himself upon her and he has sexual intercourse with her. This is what is clearly being brought out by this right here. Right? The man forces himself ba, ba, right there, on her, against, upon her, vishakav ima. Vishakavi ma, and he has sex with her, right? He lay down with her, like he euphemistically sleep with her, but he lay down for umait and death haish and death the man 
Asher Shakav that has laid Imaha with her Levado, Levado alone. So, that right there on the word condone. Once again, right here, let's see if this, this comes up right here. What's happening to this? Okay, this doesn't, okay, there it goes right there. Condone. Condone means to forgive. The real meaning is to forgive, to pardon. Right? Especially since they're putting this in biblical terms, that's actually a right and appropriate etymology. That's the correct denotation of the matter. So, let's just seal this up right here, here, here. Does the Bible condone R-A-P-E? No, it does not give, it does not pardon, right? It does not forgive, it does not pardon, right? What it does, it punishes. It puts the R-A-P-E on the same level, right? On the same level as a crime with the same punishment, right? The same punishment as murder because it's just like what you what you've done to that woman what one has done to that woman by what the ish has forced himself upon her is as when a man murders as when a man murders his neighbor shalom chabarim shalom this is ross ayadonis tafari this is yad in here ross tafari jews ross tafari israelites and i and i approve of this message like share subscribe shalom chabarim shalom and looking forward to the maharika and the zion lex abdiel ben levi ben Le lewi debate and we'll probably hold this we don't want to put it out too soon you know, but right around that time, we'll seek to release this as well. We've talked about this before, but I'm surprised one didn't pick up on, you know, condone, right? Not allow, not permit, you know, man is a free agent, a moral agent, according to his morality to choose, right? The choice factor.